Good day everyone, so I created a Dendro Reactions Cheat Sheet because since Dendro came out and so on we've had so many reactions that just came out and it's kind of difficult to get to grips with all of them so having a cheat sheet like this handy at least in the short term will certainly help you quite a bit until such a time such that you are comfortable with these reactions and how to appropriately use them. If you want this cheat sheet you can just go to my Twitter at Kokomiklan, no need to follow anything you can just grab it and yeah then be on your way but with that said let's quickly go over all of these reactions and then I'll show you just a bit of a short video at the end uh, demonstrating each one of them very systematically. So the one in the middle is called burning and you can see here yeah, this is the one that deals the least amount of damage out of almost all of them. Uh, basically this is whenever Dendro and Pyro sort of meet. Um, you guys might have seen this already in game and so on prior to 3.0. Um, but basically the whole idea here is the character that triggers the reaction second. In other words, one character can let's say apply Dendro and the other character now applies Pyro to that Dendro. That Pyro character's elemental mastery and level will then be used to calculate the damage. Now if your Dendro re um, character triggered the reaction, so in other words you first applied Pyro and then you sort of hit the enemy with Dendro, that Dendro character's stats will be used. And this is kind of a theme with all of these reactions. The character that triggers the reaction will have um, the well, well when it comes to the damage that character's stats will be used to do the calculation so that's a very very important point to sort of note regarding burning yes it is affected by the enemy's pyro resistance so um, it can be a bit stronger or weaker depending on whether the enemy's got a buff or a debuff um, and the damage that de is dealt is considered pyro damage now that is all you need to know about burning is probably the most straightforward one so let's go over to one of the more complicated ones and this is this regards like bloom and the subsequent reactions that you can trigger from it so the way in which bloom works is whenever dendro and hydro uh, meet they will create these little small dendro cores that are put like on the field you can only have a maximum of five of them at once and they will explode in about six seconds or so they will deal aoe dendro damage and that damage scales off of your elemental mastery and level and it has quite a bit of a like a high multiplier it's the same sort of multiplier that you get with overload if you're familiar with that reaction and so on now what's cool about these little seeds that are on the ground is that if you now apply pyro or electro to them what will happen is is that you'll then trigger further reactions so that is pretty much how it works you've got little seeds you create and then you can sort of bomb them with pyro and you will cause like a massive dendro damage explosion basically whenever you trigger burgeon so there's bloom little seeds um, and then you apply pyro onto it you will do a lot of damage it's got a very high multiplier so instead of the 2.0 uh, from the dendro cores just exploding by themselves you get a 3.0 multiplier but you're going to completely um, take the reaction out there's going to be no more dendro or hydro left uh, on the field and basically this sort of massive reaction is dependent on your level elemental mastery and you cannot crit with this so basically your attack stats and so on do not matter for it uh, this is also the same with the hyper bloom so this is when you apply electro onto the seeds you will also cause a massive amount of damage you will do dendro damage and this damage once again cannot crit so your attack stats and your crit damage and crit rate don't really matter but your character's level and elemental mastery does matter and of course the character that does trigger this will have their stats used in the sort of calculation now it's very important to note that if you trigger hyper bloom the dendro cores will sort of home in and hit the enemy but not all five will hit an enemy only at most like two of the five cores at any given time can hit any given enemy in other words every single enemy has got a an in a limit or there's like an internal limit to the amount of like damage it can take from hyper bloom and so on and that is um two before um a certain s interval has to um uh, go by and then you can then hit them again uh, with hyper bloom and so on so just do keep in mind you can't just trigger all five cores and hit one enemy uh, for massive amounts typically um 
if you've got a well-built let's say Amico and so on as you'll see in the video you can trigger a roughly about like 15k uh, with these so one enemy can be hit for about 30k uh, more or less um, just as a bit of a rule of thumb uh, this is the bloom reaction and its subsequent reactions it's actually kind of easy to understand you make seed you can either kaboom or you can just make it um, into a missile with, by applying electro and then you do more damage so yeah it is kind of kind of pretty simple to understand uh, basic multiplier apply a new element get a higher multiplier and so on the last reaction that we need to cover is quicken and quicken is when you um, apply dendro and electro and nothing happens so this is what a what i would sort of call um, a priming state for further reactions but and as you can see on screen it allows you to apply a state to the enemy for about eight seconds and depending on what you do um, you can then get two further effects so the one effect will be your spread and that is if an enemy that has gotten the quickened status is then hit with dendro again and what will happen is is that that damage that you will now do will be dendro damage and basically the how it works in Genshin Impact is it's like Shenha and Yunjin's flat damage buff you'll get a flat damage buff to your character which depends on your character's elemental mastery and th then this flat damage buff will go through the usual Genshin Impact damage equation in which case you can crit with it your crit damage will matter there is an internal cooldown so you can't just apply spread 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 all over and you will deal dendro damage so that is more or less how the spread um, a reaction works and it's very much the same for the aggregate one as well so basically once you've applied dendro and electro you activate the quicken state and then when you hit the enemy thereafter with electro you will also then get this flat damage buff that is sort of applied and then this damage can also crit it also has icd um, but it will deal electro damage and it's quite important to note that the flat damage buff that you'll get will be slightly less than the one that you'll get from a uh, triggering spread and um, when you look at the maths and so on but very it's very important it does also depend on your character's elements of mastery so if you're someone that loves a uh, yamiko this is the type of reaction that you want to trigger because your totems can reliably trigger this assuming you've got enough of field and dendro that's being applied to enemies and so on but it's very much like the same with the bloom um, you you have a primary reaction quicken it does nothing <laughs> so it does no damage there's nothing to it and then based upon then based off of what you then do afterwards you can either then trigger spread or um, aggravate now there is something important to mention about quicken and that is if it comes into contact with cryo uh, with geo or with animo it nothing will happen to it you won't interfere with quicken but if you apply any pyro or hydro onto it you can actually lose the quicken aura it is technically possible to apply a bit of hydro and still have enough left of on the quicken uh, but generally do keep in mind that if you apply hydro or pyro you lose the quicken reaction completely and then you have to reapply dendro and electro assuming all of the other elemental gauges and stuff is, is not present um, but yeah so this is how the dendro reactions work hopefully i've explained them well enough and let's quickly look at a video as to how each of them can be applied in the game so now we are here with masanori and basically we will try and apply the reactions as i sort of presented them in the video so first off let's see what burning does we apply a bit of dendro and here's a little clean doing a bit of um, damage so as you can see they're 373 ticks and now let's see what happens when Lumine does it. Well, you can see there's now 1,253 sort of ticks. So clearly Lumine's doing a lot more. And that's because, well, she's got a lot of elemental mastery. So the burning damage that she does is actually kind of a, kind of a lot. Um, compared to a little old Klee here that's only got like a, bit, a tiny bit of like elemental mastery. As you can see, there's not much of a damage bonus and so on. Uh, so now let's quickly take off this little pesky pyro aura and let's quickly trigger a bloom reaction so this is hydro and dendro there's a little seed and as you can see if i now attack the little seed with pyro in any way i create that burgeon effect and that essentially does a bit of like um, aoe pyro damage 
sorry, dendro damage. Oh, uh, my bad. And there you can see we triggered it again, the Burgeon. Um, and yeah, that is sort of how it works. Now let's quickly trigger the Hyper Bloom reaction. So firstly, we need to apply Hydro then dendro and now when a, when you apply a bit of electro as well we're going to trigger hyper bloom and we're going to attack the enemy with the seeds forming like little uh, what do you call it missiles and as you saw there we only uh, even though we had lots of seeds on the ground we could only trigger sort of or damage the enemy about two times and so on um, the other reaction is of course now the quicken so as the enemy's got an electro on him uh, we can now sort of um, activate the quicken state and then if we attack the enemy uh, we can activate the aggravate state as you sort of saw there uh, unfortunately as you can see here lumine herself cannot successively apply a lot of like dendro and so on so we can't really trigger the spread reaction so this is kind of important um, and this is also a very big um, problem with the dendro traveler if you only have your elemental skill you are just better off activating like the aggravate state uh, you'll see there there it is and obviously we can only trigger it about every three hits or so so that is how the internal cooldown works so once again we activate quicken there's aggravate and definitely gives us a bit of a damage bump up and so on and yeah, that is sort of um does the job uh, let's just quickly see how we can trigger the sort of spread reaction with lumine uh, we've almost got enough energies um, to get it up so there we go so now first we apply dendro and now we're going to sort of apply a bit of electro and so on and you will then see see us activate the quicken state and now lumine should be able to yeah there we go do the spread damage as you saw um as you can see there as well, um, it only triggers periodically and not all of them are crit um, rates and so on. Definitely lots of fun, uh, lots of different ways to sort of attack the enemy. And we even got a spread of about 22k. And this is with mean that's got very little attack and so on. So once again, um, you do have all of these attack stats, elements of mastery, crit rate, crit damage. There's a lot of things that sort of happen in the background, so do keep that in mind. But that would be it for this video, for all the reactions and so on. Thank you guys so much for watching. And that's all from my side. Cheers.